Well, welcome. Good morning. Oh, I love all these beautiful faces. Well, my story today is called Aunt Lucy's Cottage, and you can find the whole story in Miss Brenda's Bedtime Stories. I wanted to show you, though, isn't that a beautiful English cottage? Can everybody see that picture? Ellie was blessed to live right across the street from her great, great Aunt Lucy in a beautiful cottage. And she loved growing up across the street from Aunt Lucy's house because as she got older, not much older, just about four or five years old, mom trusted her to be able to go across by herself to visit Aunt Lucy and the fun they would have. Aunt Lucy had a beautiful cottage with a beautiful garden attached that they could go and have little picnic lunches in, maybe tea on special days, pick flowers, look for ladybugs and butterflies. But Ellie's favorite thing was inside of Aunt Lucy's cottage. She had this beautiful area that she kept all of her special little trinkets she had gotten over life. And she had all these little tiny porcelain cottages that looked so similar to hers. And Lucy or Ellie would just sit there and look at Aunt Lucy's cottages and imagine all kinds of fun stories. And sometimes she would share those stories with Aunt Lucy. She also loved Aunt Lucy's little tabby cat. And he would come and purr and play with her with strings. Well, on one of the mornings that Ellie went to go visit Aunt Lucy, she told Mommy, I'm going to see Aunt Lucy. Is that okay? Mom was fine with it. She told her, I'm in the middle of chores anyways. Go have fun. So Ellie went over to Aunt Lucy's house, and she knocked on the door. But nobody answered. That was okay. She was used to letting herself in. So she just kind of went on in. Aunt Lucy! Aunt Lucy, I'm here! But she didn't hear Aunt Lucy. That was strange. Suddenly, the tabby cat came up beside her and was purring and really nudging like he wanted something. She looked over at his bowl and it was bone dry. That's weird. This is about the time that Aunt Lucy would usually feed her cat. But again, she didn't think much of it. Aunt Lucy, Aunt Lucy, I'm here. Do you hear me? Still no reply. Maybe she's in the bathroom. So she started going towards her Aunt Lucy's bedroom. Aunt Lucy! And that's when she heard it. This kind of, oh, groaning sound. What was that? So she carefully opened the bedroom door. Aunt Lucy, it's me, Ellie. And that's when she saw it. Aunt Lucy was right there on the floor. Oh, no. She must have hurt herself getting out of bed that morning. Ellie immediately knew what she needed to do. She went over to the phone that was over by Aunt Lucy's bed, and she called Mommy. Oh, Mommy, something's happened to Aunt Lucy. C can you come over here, please? When she hung up, she noticed poor Aunt Lucy looked a little cold there on the floor. So she ran over to the bed and she grabbed a pillow and a blanket off and she made her comfortable and she sat there with her until mommy got there and soon an ambulance too. And they came and they picked up Aunt Lucy and they took her to the hospital where they found out poor Aunt Lucy had broken her hip and injured her leg a bit and she was going to be there for a little while. Ellie missed her so much. She loved Aunt Lucy and the special times they got to spend together. She couldn't wait for her to get to come home. She loved being with her. Well, weeks passed and weeks turned into months. Finally, Mommy had to come to her and say, I'm sorry, Ellie. Aunt Lucy can't live at home by herself anymore. And so our cousins who live a few states over her her son and daughter, they want her to come live with them now to make sure that they could take good care of her so that she doesn't have an injury like this again. Poor Ellie. The eyes began to swell with tears, but I love Aunt Lucy. She can't leave me. Mommy pulled her in tight and gave her a hug. Oh, honey, Aunt Lucy's always going to be with you. 
all those special memories that you've shared, all those wonderful experiences, they're always going to be with you in your heart and in your memory. She'll never be too far away from you. And she's just a phone call away. Whenever you're really, really missing Aunt Lucy, all we have to do is call her up and we could talk to her on the phone. Isn't that wonderful? Ellie started wiping her tears. I guess she still was really sad that she was going to miss her Aunt Lucy. Well, Aunt Lucy did get to come home for a few days to help make sure all of her goodies she wanted were packed and sent to the new home she'd be living in. And as she was doing it every day, Ellie would come and help her wrap up all those beautiful little treasures she had in her curio cabinet. One of the treasures was that little tiny uh, cottage that Ellie would love to look at and imagine all the stories. Lucy looked at Ellie and said, would you like to have it to remember me? I'll always remember you. I know, sweetheart, but would you like to have this as a special little gift for me? So when you look at it, you'll think of me? Oh, but it's one of your favorites. That's why we never take it down so it doesn't get broke. I know, but it's also one of your favorites. And I think of you when I see it. That made Ellie smile. Aunt Lucy thought of her too. Well, that made it a little easier. She took home the special little china, and you can see a picture of it here, the special little china figurine of the cabin that looked a lot like Aunt Lucy's cabin. Well, Ellie grew up and she became a mommy herself. But every time she looked at that little cabin, or the little cottage, she would remember her beautiful memories with Aunt Lucy. And she remembered the kindness that Aunt Lucy always showed to her. Second Samuel 2, 6 says, and now may the Lord show kindness and truth to you. I also will repay you this kindness because you have done this thing. So God's telling us when we're kind to others, it gets repaid to us. Ellie was kind to Lucy and Lucy was kind to Ellie and their love just flowed on and on. Well, as we know today, we're saying goodbye to a whole family of people we love, but it's not forever. And we have memories and special times that will always remember them. So when you start to miss Ezra and Emmy and Pastor John and Miss Sarah and anyone else who moves away from us, I hope you remember those special times you've had with them. And again, they're just a phone call away. So as you go back to your seats, I have a little snack for you and you guys can ponder all of your wonderful memories you share with the Tillet family.